Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at St. Paul's. Today we are beginning a new worship series that is going to last for the rest of the Epiphany season. We're going to be focusing in on Jesus' words to us in the Sermon on the Mount. And today especially we're going to focus in on the words of Matthew chapter 5 where Jesus speaks the Beatitudes to us, the the words of blessing upon us. And as we consider those words, we're going to see that the way that Jesus our Savior defines the blessed Christian life is quite different from the way the world speaks about blessedness. Uh, Our order of service this morning can be found in the worship folder. You can also follow on the screens. We'll begin with our opening hymn. May our Lord bless our worship today. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. You may be seated for this song of praise.
first lesson from God's Word this morning is from Psalm 1, where it speaks about two different ways of life. The blessed way of life is described as being deeply rooted in God's Word, living in His promises. Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. 
The Holy Gospel this morning is going to be the basis for the sermon. It's from Matthew chapter 5. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our next hymn. As uh, Pastor Krause mentioned, our sermon lesson for today is that gospel lesson we heard read a few minutes ago. If you'd like to follow along, you can do so on page 7 in the worship folder. Dear fellow citizens of Christ's kingdom, there's a, a popular show on Netflix called Stranger Things, and I'd imagine a, a number of you have seen that show before or at least have heard about the show. Uh, Stranger Things is about, is about a group of children living in 1980s Indiana. And one of the boys goes missing. 
turns out that nearby this Indiana town, there is a top secret government facility, and through the work that they're doing at this facility, they created this portal into a parallel world. And that's where this boy ended up. They call that place the Upside Down. You don't want to be in the Upside Down. Because the upside down, things kind of look the same as they do uh, around us, but it's much different. It's dark, it's cold, it's scary, and there are monsters lurking all around. And that's where this boy who's gone missing finds himself in, in the upside down. And so for the whole first season of Stranger Things, they're trying to find this boy. They're trying to pull him and rescue him out of the upside down. Does life ever feel that way to you here on earth? That we're living in an upside down world? You look all around you and you just can't make sense of things. Or maybe like we're living in this bizarro world that, that everything is the opposite of what we would expect it to be. In our gospel lesson for today, uh, Jesus talks about the life of a Christian and how the life of a Christian is a blessed life. But in a way that is completely upside down, compared to the world that we live in. In this section of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he gives eight statements of blessings. We call them beatitudes. And before we take a look at each one, I think it's good that we think about that word blessed and what that word means. We use it so often in church, we might not always think about what this word means. Blessed, when you think of that word today, think of the word happy, or even better, think of this word, fortunate. And so Jesus gives eight statements of blessing. He's not talking about eight different types of Christians in our lesson, but he's talking about all Christians together that each one of these statements applies to each one of us as we live our Christian faith in this upside-down world. Now, when you take a look at the world around you, who would the world consider to be blessed or fortunate? If we were to take these Beatitudes and write them from the perspective of the world that we live in, what would people say? Maybe it would sound something like this. Blessed, fortunate are those who look out for themselves. Blessed are those who care about only me. Blessed are those who simply try to climb the corporate ladder at any and all costs. Blessed are those who are popular and famous. Blessed are those who live only for themselves, who only serve themselves. Blessed are those who have so much money and so many possessions they don't know what to do with them. Blessed, happy, fortunate are those who look at life in this world and they say, let's eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we die. Now, there's obviously nothing wrong with having lots of money and there's nothing wrong with taking a promotion at work, but compare that list to the list that Jesus gives us today. Let's take a look at these eight statements. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Let's paraphrase what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Fortunate are those who recognize their own sinfulness and are sorry. Fortunate are those who realize how often our spiritual life is nothing but a sham. Blessed, fortunate are those who mourn. That can mean a lot of different things. Who mourn at sin or mourn at the effects of sin living in this world. Blessed, fortunate are the meek, the humble, 
those who are gentle, those who are selfless, those who care about other people without thinking first, how is this going to benefit me? Those who don't insist on what I want and what I think is best. Fortunate, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for for Jesus' forgiveness, for Jesus' ways, for Jesus' holiness, fighting against sin. Fortunate are the merciful, those who don't hold grudges, those who let go, those who forgive. Blessed are the pure in heart. Fortunate are those who repent of their sin each day and realize that a pure heart only comes from Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who strive to live and create harmony in this world, but more than that, those who strive to share Christ's peace with this world. And then the last one. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Fortunate are those who are called insignificant because of their faith in Jesus. Fortunate are those who are called foolish for believing in Christ. And then you know what Jesus says at the end of these statements of blessings? Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad when you are persecuted for your faith. Isn't that completely upside down? When we look at the world around us, what does the world hold up as things that we should honor and praise? Things like self and money and fame and popularity. And if we're being honest, we know very well how we long for those things too. We know very well how we want those earthly things as well. We want fame and fortune and popularity. We want an easy and carefree life here on earth. But what does Jesus hold up? And what are the things that Jesus praises? He praises things like repentance and forgiveness and humility and selflessness, and showing mercy, and bearing our crosses. Should that surprise us? I mean, is that such a shock to see Jesus talk about those things? After all, this is the same Jesus who came into our world in humility. This is the same Jesus who always did the right thing for the right possible reason. This is the same Jesus who loved his neighbor as himself. This was the same Jesus who was not afraid to confront people in their sin, but was also quick to show them grace and mercy. This was the same Jesus who came to serve, not to be served. And this was the same Jesus who came to teach us about who God is and reveal what God is like. And what did it get him? It got him killed. Don't we see that when he's standing before Pontius Pilate? Jesus, the Son of God, stands before Pontius Pilate and his face has been beaten to a bloody pulp. Blood and spit are still dripping down from Jesus. And Pilate asks him a question. Are you a king? That's what everyone's been saying about you, that you claim to be a king. Jesus, is this true? Are you a king? Remember how Jesus answered that question? He says, yes, it's true. But my kingdom is not of this world. It's true, I'm a king pilot, but my kingdom is much different than this earthly kingdom that you are a part of. My kingdom is a heavenly, spiritual kingdom. My kingdom is from another place. And words dripping with irony, Pilate responds and says, you are a king then? And he orders Jesus to be crucified. But you also know that that wasn't the end. Because this crucified king, the king who came into this world to die for you, is also your risen king 
who walked out of the grave on Easter Sunday. And what do we learn from Jesus? When we look at his life, when we look at our lesson for today, he teaches us that you and I, we live in two very different kingdoms. You and I right now, we live in an earthly kingdom. And in this kingdom, people care about self and popularity and likes on social media. They care about gossip, making money, having a comfortable life. In this earthly kingdom that we live in, very often evil is called good and good is called evil. But you're also part of a better kingdom. You're part of Christ's kingdom right now. And what do we see Jesus teaching us about this kingdom? We are blessed to be part of it. Because in this kingdom, as we gather around that gospel message and word and sacrament, what does Jesus give us? He gives us forgiveness. In this kingdom, he gives us promises of protection and care. In this kingdom, he fills our souls with his grace and mercy right now. And in this kingdom, by his grace, he looks at you and he calls you a child of God. And one day, one day in Christ's kingdom, you will see your God face to face. Christ's kingdom is not about self. Christ's kingdom is not about climbing the corporate ladder, moving your way up. You don't have to prove yourself to be part of Christ's kingdom. That's because Christ's kingdom is about Christ and his people. It's about his grace and mercy that he gives us through faith. And the great thing about this kingdom, the people who are part of it, through faith in Christ, we are all equal. We have equal status and standing before our God, fully forgiven and fully loved. And so in this kingdom, what do we strive to do? We strive to live our Christian faith. We strive to serve our God. We strive to serve one another in Christian love, not so that we can work our way up the ladder, but because of, because of by God's grace, we are part of this glorious kingdom. And so what does Jesus remind us of today? He says that as you live in this earthly kingdom, remember you are part of a much better kingdom. And when we do that, we are blessed. We're fortunate. Even, even when we're persecuted, even when people mock and ridicule us for our faith, how could Jesus say we're blessed at those times? It's because anything that reminds you and teaches you that you are part of a better kingdom, that you are part of Christ's perfect kingdom by his grace, Jesus says anything that reminds you of that, it's beneficial for your faith. The year was 1555. Mary Tudor was the queen of England. You might remember her by her nickname, her nickname was Bloody Mary. And she got that nickname because she made it one of her goals as queen to persecute and kill Protestant Christians. And so one day in 1555, two Christians got arrested. One was John Leaf and the other was John Bradford. John Bradford was a Protestant preacher who went around England telling people about Jesus, telling people about Jesus' grace and mercy. And so John Bradford and John Leaf, they were arrested and thrown into prison. And then they were ordered to be executed, to be burned at the stake. And so one day in 1555, John Bradford and John Leaf were, were taken out to be put to death. They actually had to postpone their executions. They were going to be executed in the morning, but they had to wait at night because the crowds were so great. And right before they executed them, John Bradford took a moment and he talked to the crowd. He wanted them, he wanted to ask them a question. 
He asked that if he had wronged them in any way, if he had sinned against them in any way, he asked for their forgiveness. He pleaded for their forgiveness. But he also assured them of something. He assured them that if any of them had wronged him, if any of them had sinned against them, that he had willingly and gladly forgiven them because of Christ. And then John Bradford turned to John Leaf and he spoke these words. Be of good comfort, brother, for we shall have a merry supper with the Lord this night. And they did. You and I, we live in two kingdoms. In this earthly kingdom, very often, we feel like foreigners, we feel like aliens, we feel like exiles. But then we remember we're part of a better kingdom. We're part of Christ's kingdom. And doesn't it stand to reason, then, that one of the most important things we can do living in this earthly kingdom that we live in is to share Christ and his grace and his kingdom with those who aren't part of it yet? And isn't then one of the most important things that we can do is to encourage each other and comfort each other and remind one another that we are part of a much more glorious kingdom? Sometimes that's hard. And sometimes it's hard to love your neighbor as yourself. Sometimes it's hard to bear your Christian faith in this world. Sometimes it's very hard to face ridicule and persecution for your faith. But Jesus says when you do that, you are blessed. You're fortunate because you're part of his kingdom of grace. And there's going to be a day when you will have a merry supper with the Lord in heaven. To him be the glory. Amen. Please stand. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's join to confess our Christian faith. We'll use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we bring forth our offerings to the Lord. Uh, During the offering, we ask that everyone take just a quick second and fill out one of those yellow connection cards. Uh, Once you're done filling it out, you can place it in the offering plate. Uh, Just a a reminder with those cards, too, is that on the bottom, there's a list for prayer requests. So feel free to fill that out and uh, have us pray for people in your life you know are going through a rough time.
At this time, we're going to welcome all of our newest members here at St. Paul's Church. So at this time, if those new members could come forward to be received, we'd appreciate it. You guys can take a, a front and center spot there. Dear members of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, these people, having been baptized and instructed in the teachings of the Word of God, desire to become members of our congregation. My brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ promises to confess before his Father in heaven those who faithfully confess him here on earth. You have come before this Christian congregation to declare your faith and to unite with us in Christian love and fellowship. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace, and I ask you to joyfully answer these questions. Do you believe that, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the Word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to continue steadfast in the true Christian faith, be diligent in the use of God's word and sacraments, and lead a godly life even to death? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Will you support with your prayers, time, talents, and offerings the work our Lord has given to this congregation? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Having heard your promises, we, the members of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, receive you in fellowship and love and invite you to share in our worship and mission. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Really quickly, if you guys wouldn't mind just introducing your family to our congregation. We're the Shams family. I'm Nick. This is my wife, Lindsay. Uh, she's holding Lauren, and then we have Keaton and Bennett. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. In our prayers today, we're going to remember the the following people. We're going to remember the families of Jean Falkenberg, Dave Adix, and Dwight Fredrickson, all taken home to be with their Lord. Also, just a couple of details about Dave Adix's funeral. It's going to be held at First Lutheran Church in La Crosse next Saturday at 2 p.m. with a visitation from noon until the time of the service at 2. 
we're going to give thanks for uh, Wilma Sadowski's re recovery uh, after a brief illness. We're also going to pray for a, a whole bunch of people who are either deliberating calls to here or to Luther or who have received calls to serve elsewhere. We're going to pray for Drew Cook, who was called to serve eighth grade and as athletic director here at St. Paul's. We're going to pray for Joe and Danielle Fetsenko, both of whom have been called to serve at Risen Savior Lutheran Church and School in Milwaukee. We're going to pray for Todd Russ, who was called to be principal at Luther High, for Greg Bowers, who was called to teach band, art, and drama at Luther, and for Kathy Georgeson, who was called to serve sixth grade and the upper grade Spanish at uh, Martin Luther and Trinity Lutheran School in Nina. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we confess at times that we have been too attached to the earthly world in which we live. We found our contentment in things that do not last instead of the blessings you've given us in Christ. We thank you for your grace and mercy and that you have made us part of your eternal kingdom of believers. Help us to live now as citizens of that kingdom. Lead us to daily repent of our sin, to be merciful and kind, and to show humility and grace, to endure persecution and hardship, and to let the light of Christ be seen in all we say and do. We thank you for the care Wilma Sadowski received this past week, and we ask you to be with her as she continues to recover. Lift her spirits by your grace and mercy in Christ. Be with those who have lost loved ones. Be with the families of Jean Falkenberg, Dwight Fredrickson, and Dave Adix. We ask that you comfort them with your grace and mercy in Jesus. Help each one of us to be prepared to leave this world, trusting in your Son and finding comfort in the forgiveness he gives freely. Bless those holding calls. We thank you for Joe and Danielle Fetsenko and the many blessings they've been to our ministry here at St. Paul's, as well as Kathy Georgeson and her service at Luther High. We thank you for Drew Cook, Greg Bowers, and Todd Russ, and for the ways they've been blessings to the ministries they are now serving. As they all consider where best their gifts can be used, give them and us confidence and peace to know that you will bless their decisions for the good of your kingdom. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, give us repentant and joyful hearts. Lead us to lay our sins before you, knowing that in your body and blood, you assure us our sins are forgiven, and that through this meal you strengthen our faith and give us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that awaits us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand and pray along with me the Lord's Prayer. And we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
please stand. Let's join to sing the song, Thank the Lord. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Good morning again. Great to be here to worship with you all today. Pastor Elke, thank you for your message today. Just a couple of announcements that I want to point out before we leave. Actually, I want to draw your attention to a couple of sign-up sheets. Uh, we determined during the 8 o'clock service, they're on the east wall of the fellowship hall. I had, I had some trouble with my cardinal directions, but I've got it figured out. On the east wall of the fellowship hall, there's a couple sign-up sheets there. Um, the first has to do with uh, potential 
um, building exploration, renovation exploration. We had a really great turnout at our meetings last Sunday and Tuesday. If you would like to be a part of exploring um, the possibilities of the next steps, please sign up on those sheets. I believe there's a blue and green sheet on that table out there. Also, this one's for the teens in the congregation. The Wells International Youth Rally is gonna be held in Knoxville, Tennessee this summer at the University of Tennessee. It's June 23rd through the 26th. This is open to all of our teens who are graduating from eighth grade this year all the way through uh, graduating from high school this year. So if you are a teen that falls in that age bracket, we would love for you to attend the Wells Youth Rally. It is a really awesome thing. I've been to a number of these things. Awesome faith building opportunity. Um, actual registration for the youth rally doesn't open up until like March 2nd, but if you think you'd like to go, even if there's a possibility that you think you'd like to go, um, please sign up on that sheet so we can get some, some numbers put together for busing down there. That's it for today. May God bless you all greatly this week.